Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today I'm going to introduce you to circles and a lot of vocabulary that you are responsible for around circles. So I'm going to go kind of quickly through this because some of these are words that you already know, but anything you don't know, it is your responsibility to pause the video, write the word down, write a, a written definition, or copy the drawing that I'm going to show you, the picture that I'm going to show you, or both depending on what works for you and what's going to help you understand the terms. But you are expected to know all of these terms uh, and, and know what they mean and be able to draw a picture of them and, and explain what they are. So, going to have to do a lot of pausing in this video, so here we go. Let's start with some easy ones. I've kind of categorized them here, uh, and if it's helpful to copy this chart down, uh, you might want to do that. And then we're going to add a few more terms that don't really fit into this chart afterwards. Uh, so some that you're probably already familiar with, a radius, that's simply, a radius is simply a segment that goes from the center, has one endpoint on the center of a circle, and the other endpoint on the circle. Hopefully you know that one already. A diameter is a segment, again these are all, all line segments, a segment that has both endpoints on the circle and passes right through the center of the circle. Uh, so it passes through the center and both endpoints on the circle. Then we have a chord. A chord is any segment that has both of its endpoints on the circle. So that's an example of a chord. Notice the diameter also has both of its endpoints on the circle. So a diameter is in fact a chord. It's a special case of a chord that happens to pass through the center of the circle. Um, but those are chords. Again, a chord, both endpoints on the circle. Okay, now let's talk about arcs, which you may be not as familiar with. So an arc, in general, is just a part of a circle. So if I take a circle, if I just draw myself a circle here, and just take a, a part of that circle, that little chunk right there, this piece right here, that's an arc. Um, and there are arcs, we can classify arcs by how big they are, in other words, what portion of the circle they are. So a semicircle you're probably familiar with, that's half a circle. So that's if you just take an arc that's half the circle, if you were to split it in half, uh, one half would be the semicircle. And again, whoops, try to grab that piece, that would be the semicircle, exactly half of a circle. Okay, then we have a minor arc. A minor arc is smaller than a semicircle, so less than halfway around. So something like that might be a minor arc. And that's what it would look like if it was by itself. And then a major arc. A major arc is bigger than a semicircle. So a major arc would be more than halfway around. So you could go almost all the way around. That would be an example of a major arc. Okay, now we've got some angles. And these angles are going to be classified by where their vertex is, the vertex of the angle. So a central angle, a central angle, is one whose vertex is at the center of the circle. Right? Center, central angle, easy to remember. Okay, so there's a central angle whose vertex, again, is on the center of the circle. Then we have an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is any angle whose vertex is on the circle. So any angle whose vertex is on the circle. That would be an example of an inscribed angle. An angle inscribed inside of a circle. Okay, great. Now we've got some lines, although these can actually refer to line segments as well, but for our purposes uh, we'll think of them as lines. So a tangent line, this is a huge, hugely important concept. A tangent line is a line that just touches the circle exactly once. So it just touches it. So see if I draw this line, I know there's an end there, but just pretend that's a line. And it just touches the circle. That's called a tangent line. Um, and the point that it touches the circle right there, that one point is called a point of tangency. Um, but a tangent, again, a tangent to a circle, that's different from tangent in trigonometry, although there actually is a connection between them, which uh, we'll maybe talk about in class. Tangent just touches the circle. Okay, then we have a secant line. A secant line is a line that actually passes through a circle. 
okay, a line that passes through a circle. So it intersects the circle in two places, as opposed to the tangent that just touches it in one. Okay, make sure you've got all that. Now I'm going to move on to some vocab that didn't really fit into those categories. Um, so we've got, let's see, let's start with inscribed polygons. Let's start with that. So an inscribed polygon is any polygon that is inscribed in a circle. In other words, all of its vertices are on the circle. Um, so something, let's say, like this, where the sides of a polygon are on the circle. And it doesn't have to be a regular polygon. The one I drew actually kind of looks like a regular pentagon. That's actually a really good regular pentagon, but I didn't mean to do that. But you could have something like this, for example. All right, so not all the sides have to be equal. All that has to happen for it to be an inscribed polygon is all the vertices are on the circle. Polygon where all the vertices are on the circle. Okay, um, let me get that out of the way. Then we have a cyclic quadrilateral. And a cyclic quadrilateral is simply an inscribed quadrilateral. So it's just a four-sided figure where all four vertices are on the circle. And we'll explore that a little bit more in depth later on. But that's called a cyclic quadrilateral. You do need to know that. Okay. Then we've got concentric circles. Some of you may have heard that term before. Um, concentric circles are simply when you have two or more circles that have the same center. Right? So these two circles have different radii. This is in a plane. Right? We're not going 3D here. They have the same center. So if this center here is the center of both circles, those are called concentric circles. Um, okay, moving right along. Uh, let's see, moving right along. Okay, so an intercepted arc. An intercepted arc. So what's an intercepted arc? So anytime we have an angle in the circle, um, so let's say we have an inscribed angle, for example. Let's say we have this inscribed angle. Oops, I went a little too far there. I didn't mean that. So let's say we have this inscribed angle. Okay, so this would be our inscribed angle. That angle intercepts an arc of the circle. The arc that it intercepts is this. So that's called the intercepted arc. So that's the arc that's intercepted by this particular angle. And you can have an arc intercepted by a central angle as well. And that would look like that. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say intercepted arc. Okay, what did I miss? Oh, center. Well, you know what the center means. That is the point that is equidistant from all the points on the circle. Okay. Um, moving forward now. Okay, we've got uh, got a couple examples. Now, the, the sort of big idea that I'm just going to throw at you here is that the way we measure arcs is by their central angle, by the measure of their central angle. So what I mean by that is I'm just going to go off to the side and... Uh, oops draw an example before we do these problems that you see here. Okay, so if I have a central angle, let's just do an easy angle. Let's do an easy arc, I should say. So let's say I just cut out one-fourth of that circle. Okay, so if I just take that arc that's just one-fourth of a circle, and I want to measure that, we measure it in degrees. In other words, by what fraction of the circle it is. So we know if an entire circle we think of as 360 degrees, one complete rotation. So we can measure the arc in that same way. Uh, so, so in other words, if that's one-fourth of the circle, that arc that I just drew, in other words, if that's a 90-degree angle here that cuts it, we also say that that arc measures 90 degrees. It's one-fourth of 360. Right, and you can imagine if we cut this up into four, wow, that drawing is horrible, but use your imagination, into four equal parts, each of those would be 90 degrees, so the entire thing would be 360. So basically what you need to know is that a central angle, a central angle is always equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. 
So let's just see what that looks like. Oops, I'm going to do some erasing here to get that stuff out of the way. Uh, so in this particular example, angle GQF, GQF is going to be equal to the, the arc that it intercepts. It's a central angle, so since the arc is 60 degrees, the angle is 60 degrees. And yes, it's really just that easy. Angle EQF, EQF, again, that's a central angle. It's equal to the arc that it intercepts, intercepted arc, so that's 50 degrees. Angle GQE, GQE, well, this is just angle addition here, 60 plus the 50, so that's 110 degrees. Then arc GE, it's a little hard to, to see there because it covered it, so I'm going to erase that. So arc GE, so that's this whole arc. Well, the central angle, this angle here, is the 60 plus 50, that's 110. So the arcs are going to be, when you put them together, that's going to be 110 degrees. So arc GE is going to be equal to 110 degrees. So just like we have the angle addition postulate, you can have arc addition postulate. They go together. Okay. Next, arc GHE. Now notice that here I had to use three letters to, to name that arc. When we name a major arc, we have to use three letters. Uh, and I want to show you why that is here. Okay, so I'm going to just erase everything. Okay, so if I said, if I just said arc GE, meaning this one, I wouldn't know which way to go. I wouldn't know, did I mean this arc, or did I actually mean this arc? So what we do is, when it's named with two letters, arc GE, then we go the short way. The, the shorter way, obviously, is this way. But if we want the other way, the major arc, we use three letters. So three letters for major arcs, two letters for minor arcs. So G, H, E, that's all of this. Okay. Well, we already know this part here is 110 degrees. And notice this, the rest of it, G, H, E, makes up the rest of the circle. Well, if the whole circle is 360, 360 minus 110, wow, that's really hard to read, sorry, my writing is bad on this device, leaves us with 250 degrees, so that's going to be equal to 250 degrees. Finally, arc EHF, I'm going to erase again and make some room, okay, arc EHF, EHF, so that's this whole thing. Well, the easiest way to figure that out is it's everything but this, right? So if that's 50, it's just 360 minus the 50, which leaves us with 310 degrees. And that's it for now. Uh, we'll see you again later. Bye-bye.